Hello everyone, today in this video I am going to deal with the first chapter of Flamingo of class 12th. The title of the chapter is The Last Lesson written by Alphonse Daudet. Alphonse Daudet he is a French novelist and short story writer. This story, The Last Lesson, is a bit lengthy. Therefore, for your convenience, I have divided the chapter into two parts. Today I am dealing with the first part. In the next video, I will be dealing with the second part. Before I move to the chapter, let me give you the background of this story which will enrich your understanding of this story. The last lesson is set in the day of Franco-Prussian War 1870-71 in which France was defeated by Prussia led by Bismarck. Prussia then consisted of what now are the nation Germany, Poland and part of Austria. In this story, the French district of Alsace and Lorraine have been passed into Prussian hands. So this story, the last lesson, it is set in the days, it means the story is set during Franco-Prussian War. This war was fought between 1817 to 71. This war was fought between Prussia and France. Prussia is modern day Germany. In this war, France was defeated by Prussia and the Prussian army was led by Bismarck. After the defeat of France, Prussia won the district of Alsace and Lorraine of France. Since these two districts, that is Alsace and Lorraine, will pass into the hand of Prussian soldiers. So today in this story, we are going to deal with a school. The narrator of this story is a student of a school which is situated in the district of Alsek. And how this defeat is going to affect the school is being narrated by the narrator in this story. How it would, it would affect the schooling and the education system of the district of Alsek and Lauren. So the title of the story that is the last lesson. The last lesson it means the lesson which is delivered at the end of the session or at the end of the semester. But here it's not like this. Here this lesson, the last lesson is delivered by Mr. M. Hemel and he is a French teacher. He is teaching French in the school in which the narrator is studying. And after the defeat of France, a rule has been passed that now German will be taught in each and every school of the district of Alsace and Lorraine. So today, Mr. M. Hamel, the teacher of the narrator, he is giving his last lecture in that school. And today, in the last lesson, he is highlighting the importance of mother tongue to his students. This is the map of France and here you can see this, this portion, the neighboring country is Germany and this region we are talking about in this chapter, Lorraine and Alsace. So after the defeat of France, these two districts will pass into the hand of Germany. I started for a school very late that morning and was in great dread of a scolding especially because M. Hammond had said that he would question us on participles and I did not know the first word about them. The chapter, the story starts with I, it means it's a first person narrative, the narrator is narrating us this story and he says that he was late for school that day and as he was late therefore he was very much afraid. Why he was afraid? Because M. Hamel, M. Hamel is the name of teacher of the narrator, M. Hamel is going to question them, question the students on participle. What is participle? Participle is a topic of grammar. And the narrator says that he is not prepared for the class, perhaps it was taught to them on the previous day. And the narrator is not prepared, he has not learned the rules of participle and therefore he is afraid that M. Hamel will scold him a lot and that too he is late for the school today. 
For a moment, I thought of running away and spending the day out of doors. It was so warm, so bright. The birds were chirping at the edge of the woods, and in the open field back of the sawmill, the Prussian soldiers were drilling. It was all much more tempting than the rule for participles, but I had the strength to resist and hurried off to school. So the narrator, as he was not prepared, he had not learned the rules of participles. Therefore, once it came to his mind that it would be better to bunk the school that day. And here he is giving the description of weather of that locality of that day. It was warm and so bright. As it is European country, people love the sunny day there because throughout the year they have ice all around. Therefore, whenever it is sunny, they love to, they are pleased to go to stay out in the sun. So he says that the day was quite pleasant, it was warm, there was sun and the birds were chirping and then he says that as in the background of the story I have told you that France and the Prussian soldiers were at war. So the Prussian soldiers, they were drilling, it means they were busy in exercise as it was morning time. But the narrator, he says that at end he resisted that desire. Which desire? That he should bunk the school. He said to himself that no, I should not bunk the school. And then after that he hurried off to school. When I passed the town hall, there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board. For the last two years, all our bad news had come from there. The lost battles, the draft, the orders of the commanding officer. And I thought to myself without stopping, what can be the matter now? So now the narrator, he was going to his school and as he passed the town hall, there what he saw in front of the town hall, there was a bulletin board. What is the bulletin board? Uh, it's just like a notice board as you have seen in the school. There all the important announcement, orders and the draft used to be pasted for the public, for the people to read it. So it's a sort of display board where all the news of that locality was being displayed. So when he passed over there, he saw that a crowd, number of people were standing in front of that bulletin board. They were reading the news which were displayed over there on the bulletin board. And the narrator, he says that for the last two years, all the informations, all the bad news, they were getting from that bulletin board. Why he says that all the bad news? Because the country, the part of that country was at war. So definitely war brings bad news only. There is nothing good in war. Whether you win or lose the battle. So he says that all the bad news were coming from the same bulletin board. And without stopping, he did not stop over there. And without stopping, he just thought it to himself what can be the matter now so he did not bother about it he just thought it once that something definitely bad news had come over there on the bulletin board again and he hurried to his school without bothering to read it then as i hurried by as fast as i could the blacksmith watcher who was there with his apprentice reading the bulletin called after me don't go so fast, Bob. You will get to your school in plenty of time. So the narrator, as he was getting late, he was in hurry to get to school. So as he passed that town hall, that bulletin board, the blacksmith, blacksmith is the one who deals in iron, who melts the iron and give, and give different shape to it. So the name of that blacksmith is Watcher. He was standing over there reading news from that bulletin board he along with his apprentice apprentice means train was there near that bulletin board so when he saw him hurrying to school he told him do not go so fast bub what is bub bub is used to refer to the child so he said him that don't hurry you will get enough time you have enough time to get to your school you will not be late for your school. 
I thought he was making fun of me and raised M. Hamel's little garden out of breath. So the narrator, after passing the town hall and after getting comment from the blacksmith, he says that finally he raised M. Hamel's little garden out of breath. Out of breath, it means when he raised the school, he was gasping, he was breathing heavily. And here he says that he was making fun of him. Why he says so? Because he was already late for school. But the blacksmith told him that there is no need to hurry. You have enough time to reach to school. Therefore, he was surprised and he thought that perhaps he is making fun of him because he was getting late for school. Usually when school began, there was great bustle, which could be heard in the street, the opening and the closing of desk, lesson repeated in unison very loud with our hands over our ear to understand better and the teacher's great ruler rapping on the table. Now the narrator says that early in the morning when the school starts, usually there used to be a great noise. Even you might have felt in your school as well at the time of dispersal and at the time in the morning you might have felt that when students are coming or everyone is here and there, they are running. There are different noise which can be heard. Similarly, he says that in the morning, usually there was a great bustle. Great bustle here it refers to the great noise. And he says that the noise can be clearly heard even in the street. And what noise can be heard in the street? That is the opening and closing of desk. Lesson repeated in unison. Unison it means all together. When group of students read loudly all together, that is unison with our hands over our ear to understand better. So this is a way of understanding or studying when you used to close your ears in order to avoid the sound of other students in order to understand the things which you are studying. And the teacher's great ruler rapping on the table. So at the time when the students were studying, trying to concentrate with their ears closed with their hands, at the same time teachers used to wrap their ruler on the table. Wrap, what is wrap? To hit the object several times lightly and quickly. So we're talking about the morning time when there used to be a great commotion in the school. The number of noise can be heard at that time. But now it was all still. So he says that but today it was strange. Today he observed something strange. What was strange that day? That day he could not hear any sort of noise coming from the school. Everything was still. It means there was no noise that day. There was complete silence in the school campus that day. I had counted on the commotion to get to my desk without being seen. But of course that day everything had to be quiet as Sunday morning. So he said that I counted on. Counted on it means depended on. Why he says so? Because usually he used to reach school late and what he used to do? He used to, without being getting noticed by the teacher, he used to slide into his classroom silently without being noticed and he used to get to his seat. But today the things were different. Everyone was silent. There was no noise. It was like Sunday morning. Through the window, I saw my classmates already in their place and M. Hamel walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler under his arm. I had to open the door and go in before everybody. You can imagine how I blushed and how frightened I was. So before entering into the classroom, what he did? He tried to have a look from the window and what he saw? He saw that all his classmates were there in their places. It means they were already present in the classroom, in their seat. And M. Hamel, their teacher, he was walking up and down in the classroom with his terrible iron ruler. Why he says terrible? Because it may be he is afraid of that ruler. Sometimes teacher used to beat him with it and therefore he says that it is terrible iron ruler under his arms and then he says that today he was caught he did not get chance to slip silently into the classroom without being noticed as everyone was already present in the classroom so he says that you can imagine how I blushed when he blushed when he opened the door and he went into the classroom before everyone 
why he was blushing because everyone was already present in the classroom and he was the only one who was late for school that day and therefore he was frightened also he was afraid but nothing happened am hamel saw me and said very kindly go to your place quickly little french we were beginning without you so now we come to know the name of the narrator of this story that is french so he says that as he was late for the school everyone was present in the classroom am hamel was walking up and down in the classroom with his terrible ruler under his arm but that day am hamel did not say him anything instead he told him he asked him to take his seat quickly and he says that we were beginning without him so it was a sort of surprise for him today he had encountered a number of surprising things early in the morning when he set out for the school first of all he was already late then he saw a crowd standing in front of the town hall reading something from the bulletin board and the comment of that blacksmith was surprise for him next when he reached the school there was no commotion there was no sound heard there was a total silence in the school and then when he entered the classroom am hamel did not scold him for coming late instead he said him that we were waiting for you and we were about to start the lesson without you so it was a sort of surprising for him he was totally surprised and what was the reason for it that we will come to know later on i jumped over the bench and sat down at my desk not till then when i had got a little over my fright did i see that our teacher had on his beautiful green coat his frilled shirt and little black silk cap all embroidered that he never wore except on inspection and prize days so as soon as he was allowed he was asked to take his seat by mr m hamel he went to take his seat he jumped over the bench and he sat quickly and after collecting some nerve after a few time what he saw he observed that his teacher he was wearing his special dress which he wore only on the day of inspection or on the day when prize was to be distributed so he was wearing a beautiful green coat and frilled shirt here in this photograph you can see this is, this is frilled shirt this design which is here over the body around the button that is frilled here it is on the cuff also hand cuff also so this is frilled this design is called known as frilled design and he was wearing little silk cap and this dress he particularly used to wear on the day of inspection and prize days so again he was surprised to see this usually mr am hamel did not wear this dress he wear it on the special occasion only so again he was surprised that what was special that day beside the whole school seemed so strange and so lovely but the thing that surprised me most was to see on the back benches that were always empty the village people sitting quietly like ourselves old hostel with his three cornered hat the former mayor the former postmaster and several other beside the narrator says that he was already surprised to see his teacher in that special dress and he says that that day everything was strange in the school the school was very serious that day the atmosphere the aura of the school was very severe that day very serious that day and the most surprising things to him was what he saw he saw that the villagers some people from that village were sitting in the last bench of his classroom he saw old hosse sitting with his three cornered hat here in the image you can see this is three cornered hat the former mayor was present there the former postmaster was there and many other villagers were sitting there in the classroom and former word is used with mayor and with the postmaster so it means they all were old people everybody looked sad and the hosse had brought an old primer thumbed at the ages 
and he held it open on his knees with great spectacles lying across the pages and what he saw that everyone who was present in the classroom the villagers the students all of them were sat and hoser hoser had brought with him old primer what is old primer a primer is a small introductory book on a subject so primer used to be an introductory book as in nursery you might have book of a b c d so that is a primer book or in hindi you might have got a book for kakha gaga that is old that is primer book that is known as primer book so the hoser he was an old man he has brought with himself an old primer and thumb that which was thumbed at ages thumbed it means which was torn and damaged and he had opened his old primer on his knees and his spectacles were lying across the pages on that book on the pages which were open on his lap there lies the spectacles of hoser while i was wondering about it all am hamel mounted his chair and in the same grave and gentle tone which he had used to me said my children this is the last lesson i shall give you the order has come from berlin to teach only german in the school of elsek and lorraine the new master comes tomorrow this is your last french lesson i want you to be very attentive the narrator he was already in surprise he was contemplating over the things around him he was wondering he was thinking about it he was thinking about the atmosphere of the school he was thinking about the silence which prevails in the campus today he was thinking about the villagers who were present in the classroom then suddenly he heard the voice of mr m hamel he sat on a chair and then with same grave and gentle tone grave it means serious tone he heard that mr m hamel announced something in a very serious tone what he said he said that students this is my last lesson this is my last french lesson to you people why it is so because he informed them that france has lost in the battle and order has come from berlin berlin is the capital of germany so he said that the order has come from berlin that only german will be taught in the schools of elsek and lord so he informed the students that he will not be teaching french anymore this will be their last lesson and from next day german will be taught to them and tomorrow that is the next day their new german teacher will be arriving so he asked the student to be very attentive why he asked them to be very attentive because this would be their last french lesson after that day the students will not be able to attend french lesson because french will not be taught in the district of elsek and lorraine from the next day they would be taught german only what a thunder clap these words were to me oh the wretches that was what they had put up at the town hall what the thunder clap the thunder clap it means the sound which is produced by the thunder when it's thundering and lightning the sound sound produced by thundering and lightning that is thunder clap so it was a sort of surprise he was totally taken aback who the narrator french he was totally surprised he was taken aback when when he came to know that it was his last french lesson from today on what he will not be able to read french anymore so it was a sort of great surprise for him he was not able to believe himself then he recalled about the scene of town hall then he recalled the crowd present at the town hall and then he understood that why the crowd was there at the bulletin of town hall he understood that definitely this order would have been placed over there at the bulletin board of town hall my last french lesson why i hardly knew how to write i should never learn any more i must stop there then oh how sorry i was for not learning my lessons for seeking birds eggs or going sliding on the sand 
the narrator as soon as he came to know he learned that this will be his last french lesson today he was totally surprised he was taken aback and he thought to himself that he don't know even how to write french french was his mother tongue and he says to himself he's pondering he thinking that he don't even know how to write french and from today onward he will not be taught even he says i must stop here it means that he will not be able to learn french any longer he felt very sorry for it why he felt sorry for it because when he was taught when teacher gave him lesson when teacher gave him homework to learn something at that time he was not paying attention towards his lesson towards the work assigned to him by the teacher instead he used to play with the birds egg he used to collect eggs of birds he used to play with that eggs and he used to go on sliding on sar sar is a river in france so the moment when he had time to learn french during those time he used to waste his time he never paid attention toward learning french he always played he ignored it but now when he come to know that his learning of french will stop he will stop learning french from today he was taken aback he was surprised and he was sorry for it and he was reminded of those days when he ignored his french lesson my books that had seemed such as new sense a while ago so heavy to carry my grammar and my history of the saints were old friends now that i could not give up so now he says that as soon as he learned that french will no longer be taught in their school as soon as he learned it there was a sense of nostalgia in him he became nostalgic the books which were trouble for him which were problem for him earlier here he says that it was a nuisance for him a while ago the books was nuisance for him it was a sort of problem for him it means he was not interested in study he says that those books which i hated to carry which seemed very heavy for me to carry which i thought that it is very heavy to carry and he always found those books futile useless but now today he says that all those books those grammar book those history book all those books were just like my old friends and i could not give up i could not give up it means i cannot bear the separation from all those things from all those books i cannot be separated from it they were like his old friends but earlier he never treated it like it it shows us the human psychology when we have the things with us we never care for it we never pay due respect to it but as soon as we come to know that it will be no longer with us we start longing for it the same is here with this boy with the narrator till the time he had french with him when he was taught french at that moment he always hated it and he don't wanted to study it but the day he come to know that french will not be taught in the school he became nostalgic and he started feeling sorry for it and am hamel too the idea that he was going away that i should never see him again made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky he was cranky it means bad temper bad temper it means he get angry very soon when the thought came to his mind that even am hamel will no longer be teaching him that he will go from this district he will leave the alsek he was not able to digest all this news he was not able to tell tolerate all these things earlier he was afraid of am hamel he was very strict and in the first paragraph he has said that tyrant frightening ruler he always had that ruler in his arms but today he has forgotten everything about that ruler and about the hot temper that is the ill tempered of mr am hamel just because he is nostalgic today he is very serious today he is very he is feeling very sorry today why because from tomorrow onwards from the next day everything will be changed the school pattern the teacher the slavers the books the language everything will be changed
and most importantly they will the students will not be able to learn their own native language their mother tongue so this is the thing which hurts him and he is feeling sorry about it poor man it was in the honor of the last lesson that he had put on his fine sunday clothes and now i understood why the old man of village were sitting there in the back of the room so as soon as mr am hemel announced all these things that today it will be their last lesson of french and from the next day even he will not be there in that school he will be gone somewhere else he will be out of the elsec he will have to leave the district then he understood that why he was wearing his sunday clothes sunday clothes which means the special green coat which he was wearing that day and then he understood then he come to know he realized that why the old people of the village was sitting there in the back of the classroom so all of their all of the villagers who were present over there in the classroom they have come to pay their respect to give the, their owner to the last lesson to the last lesson of which subject of french so from tomorrow from the next day french will not be will no longer be taught in the district of elsec and lorrain so therefore in order to pay respect to the teacher and to their mother tongue they have assembled over there in that classroom it was because they were sorry too they had not gone to school more it was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more so they have assembled over there they were grieved they were remorseful they were feeling sorry why they were feeling sorry that they refers to the villagers they were sorry because even they have ignored their french lesson when they were in school so therefore they are feeling sorry for it and today they have assembled in the classroom they have assembled over there they have come over there to thank mr am hamel who has taught them for the last 40 years he has been teaching in the same school for last 40 years with full sincerity and faithfulness so in order to show their respect toward their mother tongue toward french and toward mr am hamel they have assembled over there in that classroom while i was thinking of this i heard my name called it was my turn to recite what would i not have given to be able to say that dreadful role for the participant all through very loud and clear and without one mistake but i got mixed up on the first words and stood there holding on to my desk my heart beating and not daring to look up the narrator he was very sorrowful he was very unhappy he was unhappy because he will no longer be taught french and the moment when teacher was teaching him he ignored it he did not pay attention to it and therefore he was sorry for it so while he was thinking of all those things suddenly he heard his name being called so his teacher mr am hamel he called his name and it was his turn to recite to recite it means to deliver the rules of participle which was taught in the previous class and then he says that he felt very bad why he felt bad because he said that i would have given to be able to say that dreadful role it means he would have done anything to be able to recite the rules which was asked by his teacher which was taught to him in the previous class and he wished that he would have been able to recite all those rules very loud and clear without making any mistake but what happened he was not able to recite the rules he was not able to recite the rules which were given to him in the previous class related to participles and today from the core of the heart he wanted to recite it but he failed he got mixed up it means he got confused in the very first word as soon as he started speaking he got confused and he was not able to speak out he was not able to recite the rules given by his teacher so he stood there in his seat holding the bench 
and his heart was beating and not daring to look up so as he was not able to deliver what was asked by his teacher and that too in the last lesson therefore he was very much afraid his heart was beating very fast and he do not dare even to look up it means he don't have enough courage to look up so this is all for today we will continue this chapter in the second part so till now we saw that the narrator he has come to know that this will be their last lesson of french there will be no french class from the next day and therefore the villagers the students the teacher everyone even including his the narrator everyone was unhappy they were very sad for it see you in the next video